Glimpse at that line that you had out there when we were watching with which one was that? I don't know. There was at guard. He was? Nick was at left tackle. Today? Yeah. Oh, and Coach Dave was talking about that you guys would rotate. Yes, sir. Is that a unit that you could consider with Duand out there and there at guard? How would yes. that play out? Yes, that could be absolutely be considered obviously it's something that we're looking at. And again, it's always find the best five. You know, it's always at the beginning of the year, find those five that are going to be the best guys for that spot, the best guys to gel to make it a good unit. It's not about the guys. It's not about three guys, four guys. It's about five guys. So, yeah, that, that's absolutely a possibility among others. But the, the idea, uh, most people be skeptical of taking perhaps the best tackle duo in the country and having both of them change positions. How much of a consideration would that be? Oh, well, well Nick's played left before, so it's not much new for him. Uh, so he was right last side, now he's left, but not much new for him. And Thayer is a powerful young man that has the ability to play both those spots. And the fact that Dewan's coming along so well right now gives us the best opportunity to have Thayer move, if that works out, and give us the best line. Could you talk about uh, Dewan's development? Oh, it's been, it's been unbelievable. The kid is... You know, it, it's like anything else with linemen. It's maturity. You know, it, 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 you go through recruiting and you recruit a guy like that that has the enthusiasm to get where he wants to be. Dewan's always had that. His athleticism is incredible. His his attention to detail and learning football has always been the issue. He was a basketball guy. He played football because he loves to compete and play. We played a ping pong. He'd get out here and play. He loves to play. But he never took football as serious as he took basketball. So it's taken some time to develop that. Now his attention span is different. His attention to detail is different. His want to be great at football is totally different. And the fact that you've got a 370 pound man that can move. So, you know, and when you're tested against our pass rushers, if you can block them, I don't think anything during the season is going to be an issue. Steph, when you entertain something like this how i'm sure there are a lot of factors but how much of it is that the wand is just coming on in such a way that he is sort of forcing his way into the mix and how much of it is maybe there's some uncertainty about the other options maybe at left guard and that maybe somebody hadn't seized the day there what's the balance of why you're maybe in the thick about that number one of what you said is Dewan coming on okay. a guy that's that big and athletic and physical him coming on how do you not find a place for that guy? That's the deal. And then I, I love the other options. I'm telling you right now, I got I, I got 10 guys. I think the backups would start in a lot of places, in my opinion. All right, so I'm not in any way, shape, or form disappointed with those guys. But it's like you said, that guy keeps coming and coming and coming and coming. We're gonna find you. We gotta find a way to get this on the field, make this thing work. So how do we do that? And then we go about making this and that, these changes, and that might probably be the last one. It's the one right now that's working, so we'll see. Can you break down what you're seeing at the center position? I know it's early, but what are you, what are you seeing at the center position? I'm telling you, what a hell of a battle. Those two, Harry's back, he's physical, he's strong. Luke Whitewater's probably the most dedicated guy for a freshman kid to learn the position I've ever been around. And so, I mean, we get done with the national championship game, and two days later, I get videos that he's in here working out Two days after the game, coach, I'm going to go win the job. Unbelievable. So those two guys right now are in a big time, big time heavy battle. And I love the, what both of them are doing. Both intelligent, both tough. Harry's as big and strong as he's ever been after rehabbing the shoulder. So it's going to be a tremendous battle. Right now, Harry's won. And yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Hey, you moving those tackles around. Is there any thought of putting, getting Harris a shot at a tackle again? And if there's a reason to stay in the guard because you can do that in a way that other guys can't. Absolutely. He, and, and that was a thing. I mean, I'm, obviously, all that's a consideration. But the fact that Paris has picked that thing up and taken ownership in it, feels comfortable there and loves what he's doing right now. So I didn't want to disrupt that. I thought, you know what, we can keep that right there. He's, he's comfortable and he's just destroying people. I mean, so I didn't want to change him. And now all of a sudden, he's got a different thought process. And, you know, Thayer's an older guy. He's been through it all. Changing his thought process like this. He knows our offense inside and out. He's played a little bit of guard early on. So that wasn't as big a change, as, and, and it hasn't been. So it's exactly what we're Greg, so, do, you, do, you consider, do you consider feelings? <laughs> I do. When you, when you make those moves? Oh, I mean, there's no doubt. Taylor wants to be rated the number one tackle coming out of 
Uh, college football next year for the NFL draft. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. That when, and if you put it in that perspective to me, in talking to some of those guys, when, you, when you're in the NFL and you can play multiple positions like Billy and like Pat, like the guys that have gone on now and are signing these big-time contracts because of their flexibility, that makes they are more a higher draft player than me. So we're just talking focus on the draft. He's played three years of tackle for them to study. So their question is, Coach, I wonder if he can move inside. Well, they're going to see. So now all of a sudden, he's hit that it's, it's, just, it's just draft status. That enhances what he's doing. But if he would have said, hey, Coach, I don't want to do that, no, we probably wouldn't have done it. It probably would have been another way because the feelings and not feelings, but the mindset of how he goes in there and attacks that job, it absolutely means it. He's like, he's the one that said it before anybody said it. Look how Dewan's playing, Coach. We might be able to bump him up. Yeah, you're right. What a good idea. You have a nickname for that group. I mean, 6'6", six, 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 uh, 325 is based on the roster is their average. Do you have a nickname for that? No. I guess I better come up with one. I'll tell you right, my neck hurts because I'm coaching like this. And that's pretty good, I guess. Stud, if this is one this is one option. Yeah. When would you like to pick one? It'll be it'll be by the end of our first scrimmage. After that it will start to go to solidifying what we're doing. Okay. So Saturday will be a big deal. I right, move it up to Saturday. The rest of this week will be some, you know, moving and things. Then we're gonna scrimmage guys, put a this group out there, let them run, put this group out there. And then after that, start to solidify. You said this one's working. I mean, do you think right now that this would be the way you'd line up? I'd have no problem with it. What's the say about Bear that he is not only willing to bring this up? It shows you who he is. It shows you that he cares about team before anything else. Just like by coming back. Getting a degree in the kid's life, which he got the other day, called me on the phone crying. Coach, I got it. I mean, that was the most important thing that's ever happened in the kid's career. Period. The rest is gravy. He got a degree where a lot of people said you're not going to be able to do that. They challenged him, and he did. That's it. So the things that he's done, the growth that he's made, saying that shows you what kind of a person he is. That's why he's such a great player. He'll go in there and be an All-American guard. That will, that's just like that because that's how he takes things. And he wants more than anything else for this team to win. And for him to do something like that is unbelievable. So when he did that, how surprised? When he not did surprised, that. not at all. Yeah. That was my question. I mean, yes, sir. Not surprised. I was like, that's, that's unbelievable, Faye. You're right. Maybe we think about that. I know guard. I know. Hey, the same thing with Paris Johnson. Guys. Like, not that he was a starter for three years like there, but number one recruit in the nation, tackle, future NFL, you know, people are projecting him high. He's willing to, more than willing to play guard. What does that say about Paris? Same thing. Those kids understand what it's about. It's not about them. It's about the team. And more so, they understand their position. They want to play. They want to play and they want to win. They want to be the best offensive line. So they care about each other more than they care about what position I'm playing. Because, again, when you go to that next level and on Sundays they dress seven offensive linemen, guess what? If somebody's hurt, you better be able to go and play another spot. This enhances that. These guys can see that in their ability, and it helps in their development as an offensive lineman. So how, much does, uh, how much does this line give uh, maybe some comfort to a young quarterback trying to find his way? I would think the only thing that'd be a problem is throwing over him. <laughs> said the only problem I think I'd see is throwing over him. But I think when he, when, he, when, he, when those guys are in there battling and he, they can see that physicality, just like the running backs, a couple runs we had, they're like, Coach, that was easy. There's a big hole there. That gives those kids confidence. So now that quarterback doesn't have to worry about a couple other things. He can worry about what he's got to do. So I'm hoping it translates into giving them confidence. So can you give an update on, on a couple other players, Donovan Jackson, Matt Jones, uh, among others? Those two, they're playing tremendously. Out there right now, Donovan Jackson is unbelievable what he's done so far. He's running with the twos, hasn't skipped the beat. His athleticism and power and what he's done, unbelievable. Same thing with Matt. Matt went to, to center in the spring. Started guards, been playing guard, been, been playing really, really good. It still wouldn't surprise me if he started playing well and started as good as he's doing. So that's the difference. I got all those guys in there, and everybody knows. The good thing now is we're battling, and I'll move somebody. We're going to find the best guys. Go win a job if you want to win a job. It's that simple. And those two, there's two, those two you mentioned, along with Fryer. Josh Fryer, his summer with Mick, he doesn't even look like the same kid. He's 318 pounds now. He's another basketball player who's moving and playing tremendously. How do you get him some reps and work to play? There's some issues out there. But those kids are all busting their ass, and they want to play. And it's such a great group. Still, you got you and Ryan have talked in the past about wanting to show up interior. Yep. playing two guys who are tackles, kind of like trade, like guard, helping with that. 
Well, technique-wise, I think they have, and they're taller guys. Now Thayer's not. Thayer's not as tall as Paris is. But that was the initial moving those guys in there. They're both powerful kids. But what this has taught Paris is he has to play with a lot lower leverage than you have to play at the top. And, and he's done that. He's really, really got that down. Now his pad level right now, coming off the ball, he's destroying people because the difference of that is those guys have a little bit more quickness. So they're getting into the defensive lineman quicker than they like to. All right, guards are generally more powerful guys, and not that they're not more powerful, because they certainly are. But their ability to be quick off the ball and get into people is what I'm counting on being successful in their force. Yeah, one of the reasons that you talked about question. that you, you wanted to keep there and Nick was to keep where they were back in the screen when you asked you, because you do have a young quarterback and you wanted to make sure that there was protection for veterans. Absolutely. I, I'm not asking you to evaluate the quarterbacks, so yeah. but you do, but I guess, what changed and how you maybe view that quarterback situation that made this all possible? So you might not have a Dewan's. You know, sure, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing changed except Dewan's development, his summer of dedication, how he's worked and how he's moving and what he's done out here. I mean, it, when he sets in pass pro, believe me, there's nobody going around him, and they're not going through. We got the best pass blockers in America that we go against every day. That's how I judge it. If we're sitting there and, they, and we're blocking those guys, I'm not worried about any game. And Dewan right now has been dominant as a pass protector on that edge. And Nick was dominant last year as a pass protector on the edge. So it's not like that's weakened at all. I think it's strengthened. And now, like you said, the question about the interior part, now Thayer's in there. Now there's a 325-pound guard in there. That's going to be a big difference in, in the push and the firmness up front. Greg, Greg, you guys play Oregon in week two. A lot of people consider Kayvon Thibodeau to be the best pass rusher in the country. Does that give you any pause at all about moving things around? Zero. Zero. 